Eat chi. Hello, YouTube friends. This is Recovering Yankee. And I haven't gained a pound or lost a pound since the last time I did an official weigh-in. But anyway, I'm going to show you my dinner tonight. That This is my scale. You first push this. So if I leave this off, then the scale will know the weigh based on the relative weight here. But if I put this on, this adds an extra couple ounces or maybe a half a pound. So... You want it, you want it, you want the scale to be relative to this, okay? So what you do is you push this button here, and you'll see it's zeroing out. Now it says zero. It's zero pounds relative to this setup right here. Then I take spice get off the counter. I take a. I'm going to make a pound of meat here, ten ounces, thirteen ounces. Fifteen ounces, look, sixteen ounces. So that works. One point zero sixteen ounces. Okay, pause. Okay, the other day, I mentioned that I've been eating calf liver every day, a piece that's about the size of my palm, a little smaller than my palm. Okay. And unfortunately, because I mumble, I don't, I'm not a clear speaker. Sorry about that. Someone thought that I was saying cat liver, like C-A-T, cat. But no, nope, it's calf liver. I'm sorry about my uh, mumbling. Please forgive me. According to the professionals, that's about the size of the piece of liver that you're supposed to eat every day. Now, you might ask the question, why can't I eat a full piece of liver? Why do I have to cut it in small pieces? And you can see it's a little smaller than my palm, okay? Because there are so many nutrients in liver, and if you eat too big of a piece, your body can't process all that nutrients. So what it will do is it will pour it right into the, your waste receptacles, which is your urine and your poops, okay? So that's why you can't eat a large piece of liver. You eat a smaller piece of liver. Again, approximately the size of your palm, a bit smaller than your palm though. As you can see once again, okay? So, that's the liver I eat tonight. Here's my two meatballs that I'm gonna make into smash burgers. Each one's about eight ounces. And I'm gonna have some fun making a smash burger. I also have a new thing to show you tonight, but I can't tell you until I get to show it to you. There are my four eggs, already seasoned and stirred. I want to show you something new. These are chopsticks. I have been watching videos on YouTube about how to make tornado twister eggs. I'm not very good at it yet, but I'm working on it. Okay, um, this is a pan that I got from IGA. As you can see, there's a dent in here. And there's a dent there. The pan was slightly twisted too. I want to see if you know why I have this pan in relation to what I'm cooking tonight. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to guess. Why did I buy this pan on sale? And what am I planning to do with it with respect to my food tonight? Here's a simple solution. Put the burgers on your grill or your griddle surface. It takes a long time for the heat to go through all the hamburger meat. So what good cooks do is they will cover the hamburger meat like that to keep the heat in there. And that will, spice, get off the counter. And that will make it cook a lot faster. Every once in a while while you're cooking it, you want to take some water. I'm using distilled water and you just pour it right on the bottom it starts to steam up and it makes the burgers cook even better. It keeps them moist too. Okay. And the way you use these chopsticks is you put them like this and you bring the eggs in from the set from the walls of your pan, stop with a triangle, and then turn it. And what it does is it brings the egg up in, in the middle, it cooks it much faster because there's like a pocket in the middle now, and it allows the liquid eggs to run off and start cooking on here. So it's, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm not very good at it yet. So anyway, pause. I take my two hamburgers. I pop them down on the pan. 
put this in the bleach water. And I'm going to take my spatula when I find it. Oh, it's not washed yet. I'm going to crush those down and cover them up. Okay, put them close. Alright, this is how you make a smash burger. You take a big fat meatball, put it down on this, under the spatula, and you smash it down. Now, this is a plastic spatula because this is a nonstick griddle. So I'd, normally you'd use a metal heavy spatula. Now, I don't know how much time it takes to cook a burger with the lid on it, so I'm going to be experimenting tonight. It might take five minutes instead of seven or eight minutes. Years ago, I worked at Wendy's. We used to have to cook the burgers in seven minutes. I also worked at Burger King, but they were different kind of burgers. Uh, anyway, that was when I wore a younger man's clothes, thanks to Billy Joel for that phrase. Now, what you do... Since they are already heating up, I'm going to flip it over. Listen to that sizzling sound. Oh, I love it. And I'm going to cover it with... Oop, we're going to move them down. Cover it with the pan. I'm going to remember the time. 626. Okay, the two burgers are cooking under there. The calf... C-A-L-F, liver, is right there cooking. My eggs are getting ready to go on the grill. But first I have to take this contraption off. When my hamburgers are almost done, then I'll know it's ready to cook the egg time. Okay, hold on. I had to throw some water on the burgers, right around on the, not on the burgers, but right around them on the pan. And you can hear them sizzling now with the steam. Hear it? Good. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to, uh, how I learned on the internet how to do these tornado twister eggs. But it probably will come out badly, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to say I'm very good at it at this point in my life. You take these chopsticks and you pull it in like this, right? Pull it into the center and then you twist them. They call those tornado twisters. This part of the egg is already done. And you can see the liquid is going to fall off. Now you got to wait for this part to get done. That's how you do it. Something like that. They're called twister eggs or tornado eggs. Now I'm going to try the same thing over here. That's Some of it's still liquidy, so it might not work. Just kind of pull it into the center and twist it, just like that. I'm going to put these in my plate here, those that are already done. That didn't work on all of it, but it worked most of it. Not, I'm not perfect yet. Next week, maybe I'll be perfect at making twister eggs. Ah, uh, nobody's perfect. Now you take this. Over there. Like that. Take the liver. Still, still a little blood on it, so that means it's not quite done yet. Okay, see how nice it is inside? Nice and cooked. Turn it off. Look at all the grease on the stove. Now i got to clean that too. Hmm. Okay, today is the, um, what is today, the 29th? Yes. Yeah, today is the 29th. My carnivore dinner, fit for a lion. Four, a pound of burger, four eggs, calf liver. Excellent, excellent carnivore meal. Fit for a king or a lion, whichever you want to say. 
Okay, thank you very much. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll have a good. I'll let you know when I lose some weight. It's a good thing I'm not gaining. I'm, but I'm not losing. So here we go. Thank you very much.